So glory, 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 glory to on earth and peace to all men this morning. Family, peace be unto you from God the Father Almighty, giving honor and glory to Almighty God, who is the head of my life. Yes. The God that I trust to breed. Because sometimes I feel as though I can't even breed. But the Lord said to trust and obey. And I am trying my best to, to take the word of God. To be part of my life and to be a living example. Which is... You know, it's a word that we take very lightly and we think that it's okay, but being an example is not an easy thing. Being an example is difficult because when you are thinking about yourself, you could do whatever you want. But when you are an example to others and you know you have to be, the things that you normally would you know, Passover, you can't pass over it because you are building minds. So we have to trust God for to guide us and protect us. The word of God talks about brethren this morning. I want to thank him for life. I want to thank him for strength and I want to thank him for the courage that I am that I have to put forth every morning that I get on this line, on this podcast as I call it. I, I, you know, I have to come here and give mankind a word. And this morning, my word is, the just man live by faith. The just live by faith. When I say man, I speak about both male and female. We talk about faith, but when time comes to put faith into action, it becomes a problem. Because the Lord said the faith, faith without work is dead. These days I realize that um, this, you know, I want to say 2020, but life has always been rough. This year it's a little difficult because we have time to to take a look at our lives and the things that is going on around us. You know, life has always been tough. But this year it's tough in a different way because we, some of us are stuck home. Some of us, we see a lot of our family and friends are dying through this virus. And if they're not dying through the virus, illness are, are facing us. And we have to be strong in our faith because if we are not strong, we crumble. You know, I have um, my, my, uh, my granddaughter who is having such a hard time. It's not looking good for us. But in all that she's going through, she keeps saying, hold on to your faith, hold on to your faith. Everything is in God's hands. So I had a chance to take a look at Paul. And I realized that Saul always had faith. Before he came, Paul, he always had faith. But his faith was just channel in a different manner but God speaks to us and we need to understand from whence cometh our help and we know it's coming from God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth and he promised that he will not leave us comfortless but he will be our shepherd, husband, friend, our prophet, our priest, and our king. So that caused my family in Christ, I want us to hold on. You know, they talk about holding on to the balance wheel. Let us hold on to Jesus on changing hands. 
And as I listen to Paul, Paul's faith was profound from the start. On his way to Damascus, he was determined to destroy Christians. But God had another plan. He was blinded by the light, and that light was Jesus. And he spoke to him. And the thing that, that caught my attention with faith is that he says, when Christ said, Saul, Saul, why do you prosecute me? This was Paul's answer. Who are you, Lord? <laughs> How do we know, Lord? How do we know? He didn't say, who are you, you know. He said, who are you, Lord? Jesus answered, I am Jesus whom you are prosecuting. In my opinion, immediately he, he was changed when he recognized Jesus was the son of the living God. Paul's faith was always firm and fitted for the master's use. It just was channeled in the wrong direction. We, the people of God, must be considerate in our actions and our belief. And we must practice what we preach. Abraham, Abraham believed when God spoke. He listened. So today, brethren, I want to encourage you. Although we are going through this perilous time, things are not what it appears to be. Let us continue trusting in God with all our might. Knowing that he is a just God. Put your confidence and in him. Be complete in our minds and our trust. Remember all our strength come from almighty God and not another. Our service is to God and him alone. Because he is our judge and our jury. In order for, for us to be able to do the will of God. We must not only be a, a believer. But we must know. Know the God for yourself. This morning I am here. With my arms outstretched before Almighty God, begging for mercy, begging for pardon, begging for forgiveness, begging for healing of the mind, the body, the soul, and the spirit. David says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. These words may sound very easy as things that we know. But my getting to you this morning is to let you know that the Lord's arms are not short, neither his ears are deaf. But he is our savior. He's our prophet. He's our priest. And he's our king. Salvation belongs to God. And through his, through his mercy, and his love and kindness. He will bless us. Just the same way he blessed Abraham. The same way he blessed Ruth. The same way he blessed Deborah. The same way he blessed Esther. So we have to get it together. 
When the word said the just must live by faith. Because God wants us to make the, uh, the necessary changes in our life. And what that change be? That change is for each and everyone differently. We each have to know what we need in order to serve God. What we need in order to survive. As I said, I don't want to survive. I want to live. And I want to pass this on to all my friends and family who are worshipping God. Who are trying their best to worship God. The word of God said that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and the world and they that dwell therein. In this time, family in Christ, as we are coming close to Christmas or to the holidays, as they say, what do you need? What do we need? What do we need at this time? We cannot travel. We are limited in the things that we could do. So the time that we have now is to spend time with family, spend time getting to know ourselves a little better, recognizing the challenges in our life, in our lives. And know that success does not come without challenges. Opportunities, challenges, communication, and reconciling to God. No matter how, no matter how we read the word of God. You read from Genesis to Revelation. The illustration is always one thing. Obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Many a time, brethren, we are... We have to go through something in order to understand that we have to make sacrifices in this world. We're making sacrifice for the job. We have to make sacrifice for our home, our children, our husband. But when it comes to making the sacrifice for God, it's always have an issue. So let us try to avoid the issue and surrender. You know, someone says to me, that the Lord give them a vision for me. So they, they call me and said, well, teacher, mommy, you know, I had this vision X, Y, by Z, and, and you know, and I said, well, listen, I am not the one that had the vision. You had the vision. So if the Lord tell you to take this for teacher Marva, it is your job to come to take it for me. When you bring it for me, I will wait on God for his instruction what to do with it. But I am not going to pick up myself and go and get it because you said that. My reason for saying this is this. When you are the messenger, it's okay to be a messenger, but you have to deliver the message. And you cannot deliver half of the message. You have to deliver exactly what the Holy Spirit of God give unto you. It might be for some reason. We learn that the vision is true, but the time appointed is long. Unfortunately, brethren, unless we obey God and walk in the integrity of the Holy Spirit, We will not be able to be blessed completely. 
and we have to learn that we want we want to get i would like to get all of my blessings not half of the blessing but all of my blessings so i encourage you that when the lord speak do not worry about what someone think or feel you are chosen for a purpose to deliver a message. And you have to do it unconditionally. Because we are all building a bridge. And we building that bridge so that we could be able to to walk in our integrity across the bridge of life. Because as soon as you pass one bridge, there is another. And most of the time, the bridge are not in the same place. So it's according to how we accomplish the first building of the bridge. Because in every bridge that we build, there is conflicts. So we have to make sure, brethren, after you, got, you learn the first lesson, we have to make sure that the material that we are gathering to build the other bridge will be stronger than the first bridge. And in purchasing the material for the bridge, you see, many a times we talk about the bridge. We have to build the bridge, but we never talk about purchasing the material to build the bridge. The bridge don't come by guess. The bridge have to be, the, the material have to be solid. And we have to also make sure that we have proper instruction in order to build the bridge. And we have to follow the instruction through faith. The Bible tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. When we talk about evidence... We have to make sure that it is correct with God. The word of God said, the word is a light unto my feet and a lantern unto my path. So if the evidence is not lightened by God, then where is the evidence coming from? Because the commandments of God say, thou shall not lie, thou shall not steal, thou shall not covet. So we have to make sure that the 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 the, the Material that we build in the bridge, but building this bridge must be solid. You know, the Bible said, through faith we understand. You know, only through faith we understand the work of God. Through faith, I understand who Abraham was. Through faith, I understand Zachariah's position. Through faith, I understand Elizabeth's position. Through faith, I understand Mary's position. And through faith, I understand Paul. And these people that I am calling on are people who walk the walk and talk the talk. They didn't just say, they didn't just act it. They believe, they trust. You know, um, for this past couple of weeks, we've been talking in church about the birth of Christ and and uh, and a lot about Zachariah and all these, uh, you know, examples that is before us. And I take from the beginning of time, and I, I spoke on it yesterday in church, and I said again that God sent the angel upon to speak to Zachariah. Although Zachariah was a man of God, he was a priest. Although Zachariah knew his job, but when the angel appeared unto Zachariah, he still was afraid. It still shocked him that the, that the angel had to say to him, do not be afraid. When the Holy Spirit of God 
appears unto mankind. It is not like us. It comes with assurance. It comes with love. It comes with unity. It comes with everything. It's a part of the characteristic of it comes together so that we, the people of God, would be able to find that peace and find that comfort in our spirit in order for the spirit to speak to us. Most of the time you always say, do not be afraid. So that you would relax to know to able to take the information that you're getting. Most of the time you say, I jump up. You, you hear people say, I was frightened. And so I jump out of the vision. So the spirit of God always makes sure that our spirit is in, in one accord. So that we could take the message and set the angel free. Our devotion to God must be true. Because when we when we when we devote our minds and our body and our soul, this vessel, because we are the vessel, this vessel that we that we serve God with have to be always under always under what I would say on, 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 on work in progress. You know, it's always work in progress. We always have to be working on it, working on it. Because the reason why we have to work on it, because man die daily, is because we sin and come short of the glory of God. We go through this over and over again because we are always under development. Because our understanding does not always be intact. So as we are in this season of the birth of Christ. Let us try to feed the sheep. Because he said he is the shepherd and we are the sheep. And he gave us the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, the hope to go from strength to strength. Today we want to be armor bearers for God. And we can only be armor bearers for God through faith. And armor bearer is one that seeks our interests. So if we are armor bearers to bear the burden and encourage man to do the will of God, we have to know who God is. And when we talk about Amabira for God, it's by leading his people. In giving them the instruction and the description of the, of the word of God. So that man could understand from whence cometh the help. I learn as I go along that the Holy Spirit of God is willing and always dear. It's upon you and I to call upon God in spirit and in truth. The word of God coming from Samuel, it said, and it said, and David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he become his armor bearer. So we understand in order for us to do this, you have to love unconditionally. Your love has to be honest. It has to be true. There must not be any clench in it because, the, the, you see, the devil just waiting for a little insight 
to come and, and destroy. Anything that is for God, remember, the adversary does not want it to happen. Anytime you're about to serve the true and living God, that adversary that we talk about, the same one that went in the garden and interfered with Eve, is the same one that is coming to hinder us from getting where we need to go. Hinder us of that blessing. So today, my beloved brethren, we live in a world that seems to know every little about laying down one's life for another. A full understanding of this concept is vile to the Christians, especially if we know, especially if we know that we have been, we have been called into ministry. Ministry is not for everyone. Because with ministry come a certain amount of responsibility. The word said, the just must live by faith. And in order to work our ministry, we must have faith unconditionally. There must not be doubts. Instead of Offering ourselves to wait on others. We in the church expect them to wait on us. You see the attitudes about serving God is for man to serve us. But as long as we have strength in our mortal body, which comes from Almighty God, because we are armor bearers to God, we have to ask God for a special supply of anointing. Elijah said, I needed a, a fresh supply of anointing. He needed to serve. But he knew of the struggles. You know, Jesus said, it says, greater love have no man than this, that one that laid down his life for his friend. In order to lay your life down, you must have faith. So very few people will lay their life down for a friend. We talk the game, but we don't play the game. We talk the talk, but we don't walk the walk. We walk the walk when it's convenient, when we could shine, when we could, well, you know, when we could do. But it's not important. Shining is not important, you know. What is important is To encourage men to do the will of God. And you see your victory and your blessing when that individual decides to turn from the left and come on the right. It is not difficult to submit to God. But we question why should we? But it is so easy for us to submit to humans. We don't know, we may not want to admit it. But most of the time, brethren, we submit to mankind, flesh and blood, but we do not submit to the Spirit of God.
The purpose of the Holy Spirit of God is to direct our path. When Jesus was leaving, he said, if I don't go, the comforter would not come. Who will teach us all things? I learn that if you have a question, put the question to Almighty God. Many a times we do not like the answer. So we rather not to go put it to God because when we don't, when we rather not to put it to God, it's because we already know what God is going to say to us. I remember when Jesus was walking, you know, a, a man came to him and he said he have a, 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 a one of his servants is sick. And he's and he asking Jesus to heal him. But when Jesus gathered his stuff together and, and decided to go, the centurion said to him, Lord, no, Lord, speak the word and he shall be healed. You see, that centurion already had faith in Almighty God and know the power that Jesus had. He said to him, I am a man under authority. And when I say to a man, go, he go. And when I say to a man, he come, he come. So I let him know the power that lies with Jesus because he saw Jesus in operation. So he said, I know how authority works. When you speak, it's done. When I, was, when I am told something, I do it. He said, I have soldiers under me. And when I tell one to go, he go. And when I tell one to come, he comes. So Lord, I, all I ask of you is just to speak the word. And my servant shall be healed. So we're talking about the faith of the man. These are, this is the kind of faith, brethren, that we're supposed to have, especially in going through this time of our lives. So the purpose is learning who God is in your life. I understand that my that my God give my God give duty to those of us that stand with the vision of God. When I say vision, I'm talking about like the pastor. When a pastor have a vision, he always have an I'm a bearer. And that armor bearer supposed to be the one that stand with the pastor so that his vision, they call them armor bearers, so that the vision become, to, become light. You cannot serve if you have one vision and the pastor have another. You cannot serve. And this is what's happening in our spiritual Baptist faith. So we are having a lot of issues. So today, my beloved brethren in Christ, find out what is the duty of the Amabiera. And I pray that the Lord God is going to provide the strength and the courage always and display and produce an attitude of faith and peace in order for us to be successful in serving God as armor bearers. We have to learn to walk with joy and hope. Our lifestyle must be one of one of Christ and him crucified. 
Because if that, if the flesh is not put into con, into subjection, then whoever is serving as armor bearers will not be good armor bearers. The spirit must be put into subjection. The lifestyle must be one of God. And we must be able to take instructions because only if we take instruction, we will be able to produce proper sheep. Because then the sheep will have to take the instruction from you. Remember the words speak about good shepherd and the hiling. So we have to understand, brethren, who we are. Are you a, a good shepherd or are you a hiling? Remember when the hiling see the wolves coming to take the sheep is not going to stand up to defend the sheep. You know, it's going to run to take cover. But the good shepherd protects the sheep. And not, a, not the good shepherd speak with its mouth. One of the things that I often ask, ask my brethren to do is to remember that there's a silent listener to every conversation. And there's an unseen eye that sees all things. We cannot hide from God. We can hide from man for a time until God and the Holy Spirit are about to bring us to a living example. We need to know God for yourself. Learn about God. Learn about the different characteristics of this God. This, this, this Holy Spirit. The word of God tells us this is around the time that God was preparing to send the Savior. What type of condition that the Lord was in in searching to find a vessel that was about to produce our Savior. The kind of material that he looked at. The word said she was a maiden. She was pure. She was truthful. She had everything, all the characteristics to bring forth a perfect servant. To able to lead the world, lead us into the direction that the Lord wants us to be. Remember the man said, you know, I am a man under authority. Like the God we serve. The God we serve is the God with authority as power. Without his authority, we cannot move. He has to give us that, that authority and that will, that encouragement to lift our right hand. You know, we have a song until we, we, you know, that we sing all the time. And you know, all the time, man, something about, you know, my right hand, raise my right hand, Jesus, raise my right hand, oh Lord, Jesus, hold my right hand. Because we know without his leading and holding and guiding us, we are about nothing. So my words to you, my brethren in Christ, is, where do you go from here? What have you achieved 
in 19 in 2020 what have you learned in 2020 are you the same person that woke up last year all year new year's day are you the same person today How do you, what have you benefited in, in this COVID time? Are you a true soldier? If you are called to duty right at this present time, will you drop everything and do what God asks of you? Are you truly a servant of God? What does it, what, 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 what you hope to accomplish in the year 2021? Remember the word, you know. The word that I came with you this morning is the just must live by faith. But everything God asks us to do, brethren, we tend to Question God. God asks us to do this. We have to ask Tom. We have to ask Harry. We have to ask James. We have to justify it. We have to fix it. We have to weigh it. We have to touch it. It is because we have no faith and we don't believe. Hence the reason I said I don't believe anymore. I know. So if God, if the Holy Spirit of God tell me to get up and move this, I am getting up and move this. I am not asking anyone. I'm doing it. And I'm waiting to see the wonder working power of God because I believe, I know. And it comes with us as human beings. As human beings, we tend at times to not to trust our own selves, not to believe our own selves. But if you cannot trust you, how can I trust you? How could God trust you if you cannot trust yourself? So in order for us to be able to put, get place on that scale, we have to come, we have to have balance. Our equilibrium must be in, in good standing. We must be able to balance our right, our faith. Must be able to add up our belief in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We must be just. We must have discipline. You know, it have a sickness now that um you know I, I, I went to the doctor and I saw a person sitting there, the person was just the hand moving up in the air, they they just going, it just it, the body just moved, just doing whatever it wants. And I was so amazing looking at how this thing was happening. They had no control over the body, and it stayed with me. And the question I ask myself, what is man that thou art mindful of? The son of man that thou visited thee. We like a flower, we bloom in the day and by night we are wither and gone. Because the eye was going, the hand moving, the mouth moving, the foot doing what it wanted, just shaking up. No control. No control over itself. It was just doing what it wanted. And in my situation sitting there, before I recognized that the person didn't have any control, I said to myself, why did you have some discipline? Why did you carry on so? We need, we, we need a doctor office for God's sake. And those were my words. Only to find out that, they, that it was an illness. 
and I get given my mouth liberty. When I found it out, I had to ask God pardon because I've never seen anything like that before. And as I go into my doctor, I was explaining what I saw and she told me the name, which I can't remember right now. And I felt very hurt. So I want to say to my family, man condemn what they don't understand. So learn a lesson from me, teacher Marva, today. When you don't understand nothing, keep your tongue between your teeth. Say nothing. Because we don't know what we would come up with. What would, what would be our state and condition one day? We want somebody to have sympathy. We want them to have love. You know, um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say feel sorry for the person, but I am saying we just want to be able to, you know, understand that it is beyond their control. So I pray that we will ask God to, 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 you know, help us to grow, not only spiritually. But in this carnal life that we live in, able to accept things that we cannot change. Let us walk in, 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 in unity with the spirit of God. With a, you know, as the Lord said, if you give me a heart, I'm going to give you a kingdom. He said, I want a clean hands and a pure heart. Let us forget the world. Let us remove from our, of, of, from of, of, from our vocabulary. This is who I am. You know who I am. I can't change. This is who I am. When we decide to serve God, there is always be change. There must be a transformation. So to my family in Christ at this time and hour, let us try to walk by faith. Let us have courage. Know in life that there is challenges. But one thing we show about that we can always call upon God for direction. In going through the storm of life, it's tedious. But we will do like Hagar and call upon God. And I am sure that the spirit of God is going to come. Just as how it come to Zachariah. Just as how the spirit Gabriel uh, you know, came to speak to Mary. We, the children of God. Who are, who are on the battlefield. My words to you, submit to God and he will take you through. At this time in our family, I want to raise my voice to Almighty God. Times are rough. My friends and family are in deep distress at times. Through sickness. Some are weak, some hungry. Some can't feed their children. Some are going through some serious things that people are taking for granted. Some are not lending a helping hand. Some of us greedy, we won't even give a dollar. It's always mine and mine and mine and mine is mine. Some of us food throwing away in the fridge and if there's other people is hungry, we would not give a helping hand. But I want us to remember the same way you want from God is the same way others want. And if you have and you could give, please give and give freely. Don't give looking back. Give what you don't, what, what you know you, give what you know you could afford. So today, family in Christ, let us call upon divine power of the Holy Spirit. But before we do that, remember, the Lord said, before you come to lay your burden at the footstool, you need to confess. You bring your blessings. Before you take it to God, you need to confess. Anything you're going to God, we need to free our inside and we need to purge. And in order to purge, we need to confess. So today, brethren, let us take a minute to put our to confess before God because the Bible said that we have sin in thought, word, deed, and action. And that means every minute of the day. So I implore you 
take a look. Let us be loyal to ourselves and we pray that 2020, 2021 will meet us in a better state and condition. Eternal God. Father of all over land and sea, be nation bow with sacred joy, knowing this this evening that God is God alone and can create and he can destroy. Lord, hear my cry, O God, for I come, Lord, without no strength and no power of my own. I come, Lord, because I know that you are a burden bearer. I come, Lord, at this time and our Lord to ask in thee that thou will be merciful upon us, Lord. Some of us are sick. Some of us are sad. Some lost the love they had and some never learned to love you well. But I come on behalf of all those, Lord, that are in a state and condition, Lord, that their tongues stick to the roof of their mouth. They can't even say thank you. I come, Lord, because some of them in so much pain, Lord, they can't even ask you to be merciful. I come, Lord, for those, Lord, who are going through many trials and tribulation at this time, Lord. I come, Lord, because some are so sad. I come, Lord, because death is at the door to some of us. We don't know the hour, we don't know the time, but we depended upon you to take us through. I come before you, O oh God, because you know the weakness of our frame. I come before you, O oh God, because we depended upon you, O oh God, to take us through day by day and night by night. I come, Lord, bringing the Ark of the Covenant before you, O oh God. I come begging you, O oh God, to reveal your mystery, dear Jesus. I come asking you to touch hearts and minds. Bind us with love and understanding and respect. Help us to respect each other, oh God. Help us, Lord, to do thy will and do it in spirit and in truth. Help us, Lord, to do it not for fame, nor fashion, not to be seen by man, but to worship the God of glory and peace. I thank you for my home, oh God. And I thank you for all what you have done. And I pray, oh God, that you will continue to bless my going out and my coming in. Father, Lord, I bring in Amanda Jones hunt before thee at this time and our Lord. Father, you know state and condition. Father, look down upon the child, Lord, until you are in bowels of compassion. Remember the offspring of the body and the companion and the friend. Remember the mother of God. Remember the family. Lord, you know me better than I do, oh God. Sovereign God, God of glory. I wouldn't ask you why, Lord, but I will only ask you to be merciful. I pray, oh God, that you open the gate, Lord, that I took it only. I want to be able to touch your hand, Lord. I know that there is no distance in prayer. But who feels it knows it. Master Divine. Father, I beg in your foot to grant me that divine spirit. Grant me the divine knowledge to be able to do a better job. Father, my desire is to serve you with my whole heart. Not piece of my heart, Lord, but all of me. For I acknowledge, Lord, I am nothing without you. The food I eat doesn't make a difference. It doesn't matter. The clothes I wear, Lord, doesn't matter. All that matters, Lord, is that my shepherd will supply my needs and Jehovah is his name. I pray for those, Lord, that cannot pray for themselves. And I pray, oh God, Lord, that you open a door for us, Lord, where there seem to be none. I pray that you send help and you send good help. I pray, Lord, that you send help that have a desire to serve you. With a broken and a contrite heart. I hope, Lord, that you send those with love, respect, and understanding to walk in their integrity. Not to be seen or to be glorified. Sovereign God, Almighty King, the great Tetragrammaton, the unseen eye. I teach him, I've come, Lord, bending my heart towards my knee. Asking your God to come in and touch. Remember, Bishop Ashby in mercy. Lord, you know all things concerning the man. 
I beg you, God, to be merciful. Remember my family circle of bringing Mother Debbie before your God, Father. Help our God to work and work hard. Remember the offsprings of she body and remember the grands, oh God. Father, Lord God, cover them under your own almighty wing. Call the children, Lord, as you call her one day. Father, oh God, speak to them, Lord. Bind them with love and understanding and respect. Father, oh Lord God, have mercy upon you. This, have mercy upon us this morning. Look at my family circle, Lord, those that are in Trinidad. Remember the offspring of my body. Father, Lord, as I bring Keisha before thee at this very time and hour, I beg you to intervene. Father, Lord, I promise, Lord, that one day, Lord, that I would offer the child back unto you, Lord. So I leave her in your kind care and keeping because I know that my shepherd will supply her needs. And I know Jehovah is his name. But I have worked hard my whole life, Lord, and beg you to cover her. I know, Lord, that I will always have to ask because I ask for her. And you bless me. So I pray, God, that you continue to cover her. I pray, God, Lord, that her work on this earth, oh God, Jesus, that you will show her foot for the journey and settle her back for the burden. And I pray, God, Lord, that her heart would be indicted in a good matter to serve you. Father and friend, Mother Maureen are the same. Where thou lead her, I pray, God, that she follow. I pray, God, that she do your will and not her will. I pray, God, that you bless the waiting soul and you do the body if I could. This morning, Lord, all those I, Mama, lay my hands upon. Who, sir? Father Jesus, in your name, Lord. All those that I lay my hands upon. If you're blessing as small as a mustard seed, oh God, may you share it from heart to heart. Whatever state and condition, Lord, their heart and, and mind in, I beg you, fix them to suit you. I don't know no other way to serve you, Lord, but to serve you with a broken and contrived heart. I don't know how to control my emotions, Jesus, because I just want to tell you I love you, God, and help me to do right. Heavenly Father, Remember all those bereaved family, oh God. Remember Sister Marge and her family, Lord. Remember, oh God, Lord. Deceased Mother Anita, remember she family, oh God, take charge. Father, I know we're missing each other. We're missing the things that happen. This reason why I want to tell my family, hold on to your family now. Love them with all your love. Because when they're gone, you cannot worship, you can't do anything. Do it now. Tell them you love them now. Show them love. Stop the arguing and fighting and quarreling for things that is unnecessary. Because when they leave, they're not coming back. So, Father, today I bless your holy name. Remember Bishop John. Remember Mount Hope. Oh, Pilgrim this morning, take charge. Father, I love your God. I pray that you touch all those that are sick and sad, all hospitals and doctors, all those that are able to lend a helping hand. I pray, oh God, Lord, that you touch us this morning, Bishop Ashby. Praise the Lord. Giving God the honor and the glory. Uh, uh, for yet another day, we are still in the land of the living world. Our prayers and supplications that we made unto God, being the author and finisher of our faith. Um, the writer uh, has truly declared, you know, our time is in God's hands. We don't know at the time of the hour we shall make his appearance known unto us. And it's for this cause and purpose we come in preparation that we be not asking of any unclean spirit, where is our God? Uh, our lesson today shall be taken from Luke. The, 20, the fifth chapter from the 29th verse. Luke 5, 29. Follow Jesus. I will follow. Follow Jesus. I will follow, follow Jesus. I will follow my Jesus anywhere. Where he leads me, 
I will follow where he leads me. I will follow where he leads me. I will follow. I will follow Jesus anywhere. Praise the Lord. If I was found here, begin at the reading from Luke, uh, the fifth chapter from the 29th verse. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans and others that sat down with them. But there, but there, scribes and Pharisees murmured against him, his disciples, saying, Why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answered, answering, said unto them, They that are whole need need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners unto repentance. We will rest at the 32nd verse in another name, but in Jesus almighty name. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Today, once more, as I said, we glorify God for all that he's doing, all he has done, that all preparation he has made an advancement for our success and our development into uh, uh, whom he desires for us. Uh, <laughs> the, the lesson here uh, begins um, in the 29th verse by saying, Levi made a great feast in his own house, and there was a great company of publicans and others who sat down with them. Uh, uh, the focus on this particular verse is that, you know, uh, Levi, uh, referring to Matthew himself, the tax collector, not coming as Nicodemus by night, but boldly accepting Christ for who he was, he made the declaration. It said that he, what he gave what a great feast in his house. Now, giving or uh, uh, making the acknowledgement, you know, the Bible speaks of Nicodemus, and Nicodemus came to Jesus, also in, in similar fashion, declaring, you know, that, you know, he said, we know, Lord, we know that thou art uh, come from God, because the thing that you do, uh, uh, no man can do it. He would lead, uh, Nicodemus was made, able to make a declaration under the shadow of darkness. But this Bible tells me here in the 29th verse that Matthew, after coming to the knowledge of who Jesus was, the Bible tells us what he gave a great feast in his own house. Now, it didn't say, you know, he gave a feast, but a great feast. And in, in, in the manner in which it says great feast, it is, it is, it is in similar nature uh, uh, as you know, as the prodigal son, as he returned, his father told them to go kill the fattest calf, go get my best robe, get, go get my best ring and put it on his finger, and there was a rejoicing that all they that were in the neighborhood or in the vicinity was able to know something was going on. This is the same declaration that Matthew made when he decided to keep a great feast in his house, declaring, you know, that Jesus was in in the vicinity. And the, 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 the thing is, the issue being identified was not of the feast, but it was a company of publicans and others who were not considered either righteous nor holy. Jesus sat with these people of whom the tax collector was one who was not considered as a fair individual or, or a just man. For as they collected taxes for Caesar, they would also line their own pockets. In the days of slavery, they may, may have been called Uncle Tom or House Negroes. Favored, 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 yet persecuting others. He the Bible says Matthew invited his friends. Why? To hear and to share of the good news which Jesus has brought into his house. Not unto the righteous, but what? Unto the sinners. 
and the outcasts. Those who stood around were all puzzled at his behavior. As we were, as we would have today, began to think and to say all manner of evil against him. And he said he's righteous, he said he's holy, but yet why does he sit with sinners? For we, what, are better than them? Why are he lowering himself? This is what the ungodly man would say to you when you're trying to do the thing which God has instructed of you. The Bible tells us he went into the house of the ungodly. Some friends we have would we, we, we try to influence us into not doing the right thing. They would say, if, it, if that was me, I wouldn't do that. Many of us, especially in the Baptist faith, we may have heard many of these expressions, what you're doing with them people, those people are not righteous, they're ungodly, but the 30th verse says, but there, scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples saying, why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? Why? The scribes and the Pharisees murmured. Why? It was not according to the custom. Yet their, their, yet their customs and religious could not save the people from their sins. He was asked directly, why do you eat and drink with publicans? They confronted him, for we oftentimes condemn the things we do, do not understand. They could not understand, if thou art godly, why commune with those people? There will always be people who think or believe that they are better than others. The evil or the devil, I want to tell you, has already entered into your heart as it did with Judas when he be betrayed Christ. The scribes and the Pharisees, who were there? The scribes were there who, who write the laws. The Pharisees were there who interpreted the laws and justified it according to as it was written. The scribes and Pharisees were the reigning authority in those days. So if they were displeased, <laughs> many would think they were right. Just as many of us today, we worship our leaders, we worship our mothers, and whatever comes out of their mouth, we believe automatically, but the Bible tells us prove all things. I'm not saying that the mother will deceive you, I'm not saying the pastor will mislead you, but make sure whom you are obeying has the proper authority to lead you. Because the Bible tells us, many shall come in my name, declaring that they are the Lord. But they will come as false prophets to deceive you, to mislead you, and misdirect you. Remember Satan in the garden with Eve? Surely you will not die, but you will be as wise as God. The same words the devil will use to, to, to confuse you. But be holy, be steadfast and unmovable. They could not understand because they, they were not godly. Many of us, we come with a, a, a form of godliness but denying the powers of, of thereof. These are the people in authority whom we are looking at, the scribes and the Pharisees. What they say, they, they must be right. What the Pope said, he must be right. But no, there is one God and Father of all. Just as, we, as he would speak to them, he would speak to us in the same likeness and manner. Jesus 
answer. Jesus asked the question of a particular group that stood around having passed judgment on a particular woman. And he declared, so when they confronted, when they continued asking him, he lifted up it himself and said unto them, He that is without sin amongst you, let him cast the first stone. Many of us, we want to say who righteous and who unrighteous. We want to say who godly and who ungodly. But whom God has blessed, the Bible says, let no man curse. It is God who judges all men. For he, for he has declared, I will come quickly. For my reward is with me to judge every man. Every man. The rich, the poor, the righteous, the unrighteous, the godly, the ungodly, the saved, the unsaved. According to his work. No work, no reward. The 31st verse says, And Jesus answered, said unto him, unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Jesus answered according to the murmuring. Be ye careful when you're murmuring expressions against God and his will and his purpose. They that are whole need not a physician. If you are well, there is no need for you to visit a doctor. But they who are in need, come unto me, all ye that labor and are of a heavy laden, and I, Jesus, will give you rest. We must know from whence coming our help, that we will be able to lift up our eyes unto the hills, not unto man, for the arms of flesh shall fail us. We dare not trust our own. Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty there that are bruised. This is the purpose he came. If ye have a need, if you realize that you can't do it of yourself, Jesus says, come. You need to be released or relieved of your issues. Jesus says, come. You tried all else and failed. Jesus again says, come. When men shall persecute you and revile you and say all manner of evil against you, the Bible declared unto us, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great shall your reward be in heaven. Seek ye first the kingdom, and all else will be added. As we oftentimes say, well, you know what? We're going to put that, a cherry on the top, an ice there on the cake. For what it is well, it is well with your soul. The 32nd verse, I, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners are, whew, to repentance. I came not to call, <laughs> not the righteous. Because you know what Revelation says? They that are righteous, let them be righteous still. They that are holy, let them be holy still. If it is well with your soul, many a times we say, you know what, I have arrived. If you have arrived and you're rich, you know that completion. The Bible tells us he will shorten the day for the very elect sake. You will be taken from work unto reward. I learned that the, a question was asked. Once we reach perfection, what happens then? Then, once we reach perfection, what happens then? Remember Jesus? When he was upon the cross, he said, Father, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost. Our 
Our job is to make our election sure. Our job is to walk holy, circumspect to the will of God. There are many, whew, there are many possible reasons why a sick person may refuse service of a doctor. Perhaps we don't know that we are sick. Many of us, we feel as though we are well. Our spirit is well. You know, I walk in in righteousness, but we are sick. We haven't come to the realization that we are in need of help. Perhaps you know you're sick, but you don't think that you can get better on your own. It is not up to you. The Bible says he is a great physician. You don't know Whew. that you need a doctor. Sometimes we say, well, it, it, it's just a little stomach pain. I'll just take a, a aspirin. It's just a little sprain. It'll get better on its own. Sometimes we say, well, I will give it a little time and go heal itself. But the Bible tells us Jesus said, this very hour, you can receive healing, you can receive redemption. Perhaps you know you're sick, and you know you need a doctor, but you don't know that there is a doctor in Jesus. There is a doctor within the spirit. We try to do things too much physically. But we are not seeking a, a spiritual healing. For that which comes from within portrays on the outside. Perhaps you know you're sick. <laughs> but you know what? Nobody else can know. Many times we are suffering with issues. But I will keep it to myself. But my Bible tells me the family and prayers together, stays together. How can we say we are family, a body of people, a body fitly joined together? And the brain does not know that the hand is having an issue. The, the brain does not know that the foot is having an issue. There is no communication between the, the, the body parts. So we cannot assist. We cannot help. We cannot offer a, a, a word of prayer that healing may come about. Jesus is the perfect doctor to heal us from our sins. He's always available. He always makes a perfect diagnosis. He provides a complete cure. Once you are cured by the Spirit, by God, you are cured. You need no revisitation. He even pays what? The doctors. See, no charge. No charge. Come and be healed. The Bible says, of come all ye that labor and a heavy laden, and I, Jesus, shall give you rest. But don't do as the five, as the nine. When ten were healed, only one returned to give thanks. Let us recognize, just as Matthew here, he decided, after hearing the good news, he decided, you know, I am going to keep a feast. He decided that, 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 that his friends and his neighbors would know, would also know of the good news. He was not selfish in keeping it to himself. He received something from God and he brought it back to his house. And the rejoicing continued. How many of us after rejoicing with God? In the church, we return to our homes. 
rejoicing, giving God praise, giving Him thanks, acknowledging that it was God. And if it had not been for God who was on our side, what should we have done? What could we have done? We can do nothing of ourselves, but I can do all things through Christ and Him only who has strengthened me. The grace, the love, the joy that I have, no man can give it unto me but God. So do not seek happiness. Do not seek peace within the flesh. But seek that peace within the spirit. And the spirit will be so overjoyed that the flesh has to respond. Remember, the Bible declared, it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaketh. If it's not in your heart, you cannot bring it. You cannot acknowledge it. Neither can you declare it. This is the prayer of my heart. In the name of the Jesus, almighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise be to Almighty God, family in Christ. God and man make it manifest this morning. We thank Him God for His mercy and the strength that He has developed. First of all, for this good word this morning, the lesson coming from Luke, the fifth chapter, from the 29th verse to the 32nd verse. The 29th verse, Matthew 9, Matthew the 9th chapter, the 9th verse. Matthew the 9th chapter, the 9th verse. The 30th, but Matthew the 11th chapter, the 19th verse. The 31st verse speaks for itself. 32 Matthew 9, 13. So today my family in Christ... Let us continue again trusting in the Lord, as my word said unto you. Let us trust in the Lord with all our might and lead not unto our own understanding. For to trust in the Lord is to know God, is to understand that He is God all by Himself. And I learned that if we wait on the Lord and be of good courage, He shall strengthen our heart. But my words to you, brethren, when we go into trials and we go into the tribulation and the things that we have to go through in this life because no cross, no crown. You know, the Bible said if your right hand offend, you cut it off. But we don't mean directly taking a cutlass and chopping off your hand. But sometimes we need to separate ourselves from the things that beset us, so easily beset us. So my words to you, my family in Christ, take your time, walk step by step and precept after precept. In all that we do in this life, remember, there is a price to pay. We tend to go along life with like a thinking horse to battle, say what I say and do what I do. We tend to want to judge every man. We tend to want to challenge everything. We tend to want to... And if, you know, we challenge the weak, we don't challenge strong people. What I have noticed growing up as a child, and I try to put it today, is that when, you were, when I was growing up in Trinidad, being chubby, you know, they used to call fat. People always tease you because you are insecure. And they will do you all type of things, push you, chuck you, all different things. One day, mommy said to me, the day you come home and tell me somebody chuck you again, you will find out what happened. And I know Anna Hagee, and who did know my mother, know that when she finished with you, some bloodshed falling somewhere. But the first day I retaliate, it was the last day. 
that someone interfere with me. And I learned that from them. So I am saying to you, my brethren, just as how we just retaliate for the flesh, when someone interfere with your spiritual ability, your accountability with God, you have to defend who you are. We challenge the people that is weak because we tell yourself we up there. But remember, just as you're challenging the weak, God is going to challenge you. The spirit of God just has to step aside and leave you in the hands of the devil. And then you know what it is when you're challenging somebody that is unable to fight back. And I've seen it all among my friends and family. I'm watching how we're challenging those that are weak. You know someone that's able to do this? And it's not that you're going to teach them so that they won't have to bother, you know. You tread on their weakness. But we forget that there is a man they call Jehovah God. And he sees and he knows all things. And I learned that we have to pay for everything before we leave here. Remember David, all what David said, all what God said, David is a man of my own heart. He had was to go, he couldn't build the house of God. And he had a desire to do so. So today, brethren, trust in the Lord with all your might. Those are you or they who are weak like I am and who depend only on Almighty God for the food I eat, the clothes I wear, and the breath that I breathe. Remember. In your silence by God, remember, hear death. His eyes is not shut and his arms are not short. The word coming from the 27th Psalm of the Psalmist David, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen you. I want you to claim that God is your refuge in the time of trouble. He comes. And here come. He come when you have a need. And he does come like a mighty Russian wind. He does cast out every doubt and fear. But you have to wait. And you have to be courageous. And in your waiting prayer, family in Christ, remember the Lord is your shepherd and you shall not want. It is not easy to go through because going through a storm, you must be tossed by the billows. But if you intend to follow God and walk according to his will, remember there will be challenges. Sometimes the challenges unto death. But nothing happened without God in giving, without God in control. The time come to die, we have to die. As I said to my people any day, the day you hear the breath stop, don't try to come to revive. Because if I come back, I'll be mad with you. Don't do it. Let me go in the name of Jesus. Because I still, I always feel it's better to be with God than where we are now. Because we are so desperately wicked to each other. The Bible said the very arms that feed us does kill us. You can't trust your very arm. You know, we have two eyes, God blind eyes. All of a sudden now, we have to break glasses because we can't trust the very, the very, you know, um, vision that we have. Because we think we see in a bat and it might be a ball. And if you don't come out of, out of the way, that ball is going to damage you. So my word to my family in Christ, trust the Lord. We are living in times that sometimes we can't even trust our own self because the arms of flesh fail in us. But I am saying to you with all my strength and all my belief, you might hear a crook in my voice, you might hear tears. But I'm calling upon that divine power because the body, the body, the body does break. The body does break. And you know, I does, it doesn't matter to me what, 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 the, what, the, what the unsaved man think. Because not because we baptize, we save, you know. Sometimes the very same people that go under Jordan is not saved. They go on a dry sinner and they come up a wet one. And sometimes they come up worse than they was before. 
Because when you listen to the song and you expect that person to have your, have, have your back and that person believe, when you listen to them, you want to know what's going on. And I ain't talking about all these spiritual Baptist people. Eh? And I have to say to my family, those of us who have a problem with us, don't come into the faith and when you finish, run your mouth on it. You know who we are before you come. Christ came, to, came and died that we may have life and have it more abundantly. And as Bishop says, if you're, the, if you're already saved, you don't need Christ. If you're already holy, you don't need Christ. So if you're good, you're good. Those who want to hit up, stay there. Don't come down. Because he coming like a mighty Russian wind. So this evening, family in Christ, I pray that the Lord will continue to bless us and grant us hope. You know, I want to make a shout out to Sister Roxanne Davis, who mother passed on last week. To you, my beloved sister, I thank you for your encouragement and I thank you for your voice. I thank you for your listening here. And in your time of grief, I pray, oh God, that he cover you under his blood. And he keep you, Lord, because with oh God, we have no strength and courage. And I pray, oh God, that the Lord God will, that your mother's soul is going to rest in peace. And you will always remember your mother for who she is. Remember your advice. Remember the courage. Remember all the good things that she has done and given unto you that will keep you strong. That you may be able to walk this way. This journey that is before you. Heaven bless you. Continue in prayer and I will continue to pray for you. May God bless you. This I ask to all my family. I see Bishop John is here with us this morning. Bishop John, may God bless you this morning. I don't know if you have a voice. Yes, I do have a voice. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Family, here is Bishop John. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The strife is on, the battle done. Now is the thing to strive on. Oh, let the song of praise be sung. That mighty as power. Have done their work, and Jesus had his food, his purse. Let shouts of praise and joy out burn. On the third morning, he rose again, glorious in majesty to reign. Oh, let us swell the joyful of the Hallelujah, Lord, by the strength which from this string, thy servant free, that we may live. And sing to thee. Ah, 
songs been with me most of the time while you were speaking, Mother Marva, and I was wondering why to sing this song, you know, mm -hmm. and until I heard you talk about with someone who have lost their loved one, so then I says, well, you know, I guess that's the reason why that song came to me, so then that uh, gave me the confidence to sing it, and may God bless and comfort her. The ones that are in sorrow, because yeah. he promises, he let not your heart be troubled, but we have to believe that the good Lord is going to bless and keep us in times of need. We need a savior. In times like these, we need a friend, and he is our savior, and he is our friend, the one that we can call upon and he will surely answer our prayer. May God bless each and every one in another name, but in Jesus' almighty name, already gone past my lot of time. Praise God. <laughs> Family in Christ, peace be unto you, and I thank you for your listening air. To all those that are listening today, be careful on the road. There are drivers that are, you know, they're not driving the way they're supposed to. They're, you know, they're all over the place. So be careful on the road. I pray that all is well with your soul and God is going to take care. Remember the reason for the vacation, the holiday that is coming up. Try your best, brethren, and give to those who have need. We are in a time now where we can't run up and down. You know, if I could have been, you know, if I could have gone somewhere, I've been shooting that or something like that. But I would not have been because I would have been working. So today, brethren, let us take that time, this time that God gave us to reminisce on what we have had and what we have now. And how we could change our life for the better. Let us not be selfish about I and I and I and what I want and what I want. Ask yourself the question. Look how much God has given to you. What are you giving to God? I ask myself all the time. I know where I came from. I know my state and condition. Today, I know what Anna, my mother deceased, has given unto me. I am trying to give others. So may God bless you. May he cause his face to shine upon us and grant us peace. To all my family, heaven bless, love you. Have a blessed one. We thank the Lord for this, our food, and most because of Jesus' blood. Let manna to our soul be given, the breath of life sent down from heaven. For Christ's sake, amen. To my beloved son, you all have a blessed one. <laughs>